Hey everyone, welcome to my Singularity NAS build log. For those of you who don't know, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So in this video, I'm going to be first showing you the hardware that I'm using in the build, then showing you the build process, then we'll have a look at the finished product, and then we'll be doing some testing, performance results and temperature results. Okay, so first of all, the motherboard that I'm using is the Asus E35M1i Deluxe. So this is an ITX motherboard. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I have a review on this motherboard on my channel. So click on the link on the screen to check that out. The memory that I'm using is just a 4 gig stick of Corsair XMS3. This runs at 1333 megahertz, 99924, 1.5 volts. Next up, the case that I'm using is the Lian Lee PC Q25. I also have a review of this on my channel, so click on the link to check that out. I'll give you a much better look at the case as I'm building the computer, so you'll get a fairly good look at it then. The hard drives that I'm using now, I'll be chopping and changing hard drives a lot because this case actually has five hot swap bays for 3.5 inch drives it's a perfect little case for a NAS build so this is only the hard drives that I'll be using initially I'll be adding onto them onto the hard drive capacity shortly within the next few weeks so here I have a Western Digital Green well they're all Western Digital Greens I have a 3 terabyte and two 2 terabytes the power supply that I'm using is the Corsair HX650. This is a bit of overkill for this build, but because I will at some stage be running like the max hard drive capacity of the case, I'll have the build completely decked out. It takes eight hard drives in total. I always say go for something more powerful than you need to allow for future upgrades. Power supplies is something that you don't want to skimp on. It's something that you don't want to be having problems with and it only costs that little bit extra anyway to get something far better. So that's all the hardware that I'm using in the build. Surprisingly not much and the reason for this is that both the CPU and the GPU are integrated into the motherboard. Now it's time to start the build. Okay, I've started the build. I've got a couple of the hard drives in and the motherboard is installed and the memory is installed into the motherboard. So I've actually left one of the hard drives out because I wanted to show you how they get installed. So first of all you need to install the rails onto the hard drives which is just a matter of pushing them on and installing them using the, thumb screw, the included thumb screws so it's a toolless design and then they just slide straight into the hot swap bays and yeah that's all there is to it then you can actually lock them in position using this and tighten that up so I actually already have the motherboard installed at this point but I'll just give you a quick look at it as I've said I've done a review on this it's on my channel so make sure you check that out for full details but Basically it has four USB 3, six SATA 3, and it takes up to eight gig of single channel DDR3, 1066 megahertz. It has onboard 802.11n Wi-Fi, and it's the AMD E350 dual core processor. And that chipset actually performs the functionality of the Northbridge as well and it also has a GPU on board so it's an interesting architecture this architecture is designed for netbooks, notebooks and you know small ITX motherboards like this one which are pretty much just designed for HTPCs and NAS systems that sort of thing so it's a small, small footprint architecture small in size also very low power consumption and low heat so basically underneath that heatsink is two chipsets the E350 which includes a CPU, GPU and the, 
you know, performs the functionality of the North Bridge. And also on, under there is a fusion controller hub, which is the AMD A50. Now for a close look at the memory. So I've already mentioned the specifications. But you can see it's got a low profile heatsink and a green PCB. Alright, just another little step in the build. I've installed the third hard drive and I've now started a little bit of the wiring. I've wired up the two fans. The fan, the 140mm fan in the front and the 120mm fan in the top. You can see I've got them connected up there to the motherboard and wired across the motherboard which is something I would usually never do. I've also got the front panel wired up here. The wiring in this case is going to be very different from what I usually do. Usually I keep all the wiring away from the motherboard and away from the heat generating components. But the design of this case and this build is going to be very different. Mainly because the power supply sits across the top of the motherboard in here. And that's the reason I'm showing you this now because once I install the power supply you're not going to be able to see the motherboard anymore. It's going to cover the motherboard and there's going to be cables everywhere. I think what's going to happen is the cables are going to sit either down the back of the hard drives or down the bottom of the case here. Well, most of them anyway, but I think a lot of them will be crossing over the, the motherboard, like coming down here. Anyway, I'll leave that to when I put the power supply in. But what I wanted to tell you was about the thermal design of this case. Now, I do talk about this in my review, but the fan in the front sucks air through, through either side, okay? And that's the only fan that's sucking air into the case, sucking cold air into the case. It can't get air through the front of the case. The fan in the top is exhausting. Now that's a 120 millimeter and this is a 140 millimeter, as I've said. So obviously this fan is going to be sucking more air in than this fan is exhausting. So also, the, the power supply is facing towards the motherboard. So the thermal design of this case is cold air in through the front, hot air out through the, the top, and also hot air out through the power supply because it sucks it off the top of the motherboard and then out through the back of the power supply. So that means two fans sucking air out, one fan sucking air in. So that means you need to have extra ventilation to allow for that. So down the bottom here is another large ventilated area to allow for the two fans sucking out, one fan sucking in. So yeah, that's the thermal design of this case and that's the wiring that I've done so far. I'm now going to install the power supply and then I'll have a major wiring job ahead of me. Just to look at that dust filter on the bottom of the case while I'm here. So as I've mentioned, it's got dust filters all round. Okay, I've installed the power supply and I've completed the cable management. It feels like I have missed out on some steps, on showing you some steps, but you know, once the power supply was in, there was no point in showing you that's the next step because it was just a matter of doing the cable management and that was it, and I can show you all that now. And you know, there were, it's a really simple build because I didn't have to install a CPU or a, a CPU cooler or a graphics card, so very quick and easy. The, it was a breeze to build, it all went together really nicely. This case is, it's an awesome little case. As you can see, I'm using a different power supply. There's a few reasons for this. This one was a bit shorter to allow me ro more room for the cables because I had to harshly bend the cables for the HX650, which I wasn't pleased about. I mean, it, it was modular, so there was actually only one cable that I had to run, which was the 4-pin Molex to power the hot swap bays so it would have been awesome but you know slightly too long so yeah a few reasons why I swapped to this also because the 650 was major overkill I mean think about how much power this system is going to use no discrete graphics card extremely low power platform and motherboard all that's really powering is hard drives because the motherboard uses hardly any power but anyway it all worked out I've got all the extra cables pushed in up here so they're all out of the way nicely they're not jammed in there they fit in there nicely 
There's only this 24 pin motherboard power hanging down here which I'm just going to tie up like that so I can get all the hard drives in down the bottom if I want to. I can get an expansion card in if I want to there. All I have to do is push those SATA data cables up out of the way. A RAID card would be nice down there because you know with eight drives in total in this system it'd be nice to set up RAID 5 or something. I'm sure I could run that off the motherboard but you know it's always nice to have a RAID card for a whole bunch of different reasons. Now some of you might be worried about the power supply clearance off the motherboard. Well you can see the height of the motherboard is actually the height of the back I.O. panel there so you can see the gap between the power supply and the motherboard is actually about 50 millimeters and on the power supply facing towards the motherboard is a fan so that fan sucking the hot air off the motherboard you've got the top fan sucking the hot air out you've got a ventilation a big ventilation here you've got the 140 mil at the front cooling the hard drives the cooling in this case is awesome okay so this is unfinished because I haven't installed all the drives that I intend on installing in this system so I also ran out of SATA 3 data cables because all the ones that I have are 90 degree on one end and as you can see just here you can't install 90 degree SATA data cables on these two or that one either and it needs to be not 90 degree on the other end either so it needs to be straight on both ends for those particular connections and there's three of those so I didn't have any completely straight SATA data cables so I'll have to order some of them in or something so that I can yeah complete the build and I also need to get more hard drives uh, and I think that's everything I think that's everything that I wanted to say okay I've got the system up and running and I'm installing Windows and I just wanted to say that there will be further well, a further video on this system once I've installed all the hard drives and I will probably swap this power supply over to a modular power supply at some stage as well you know a nice short modular low power power supply so yeah once it's all finished off I will make another video an update video now it's time for the benchmark and temperature results Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favorite if you want to see more.